Traveling the Vortex. Side trip. Join Colonel Lethbridge Stewart as he defends the greater UK and the world in side trip number 19. Watch out for flying bubbles. I'm Keith. I'm Sean. I'm Glenn. What did you guys think of? We liked Christmas so much <laughs> that we decided to do it twice. So you get two from us, our yeah. after Christmas special. Yeah. And should for we call it our Boxing Day special? Oh, Boxing Day special. I like Boxing it. Day special. <laughs> or New Year's special, I guess, at yeah. this point. For those of well, you who know Glenn. we've passed both of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are reviewing. Keith, uh, his head off. <laughs> Keith, Keith started to do. He, he, he was rushing right into this. Uh, we are. That's how we do these side trips, usually. <laughs> Candy Charm Books uh, was gracious enough to release, just ahead of Christmas, a special Christmas story in the Lethbridge Stewart line. And it is called The Fright Before Christmas. And it was written by Tom Dexter, which I'm sure we will find out later was probably actually written under a pen name, as was another one that I was. <laughs> which one was written under a pen name? The uh, short story Legacies was not written by a woman. Really? I'm not sure I'm supposed to divulge this, but it was written by somebody we all know really well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Wait, wait, and I'll put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, this, the this could be the Tom same. Tom Dexter has been written. He, he's written has he? Okay. <laughs> something else, anyway. Um, and if, if you have not read this, it is available on the Candy Jar website for free it was to download. A it was a special Christmas gift for those of us Lethbridge Stewart series fans. Yes. We, we, we certainly appreciate it because it, it – it, well, I, I'll, I'll come around and say it. I thought this was fun. Oh, yeah. This was a blast. This was very Christmassy. This was a Christmas episode is what this was. <laughs> it really was. Uh, putting Lethbridge Stewart in probably the most uncomfortable situation <laughs> that he possibly could be put in. And the fact that he had to dress as Santa. And then the, there were so many other people dressed as Santa, too. Because <laughs> apparently they had set up this special Christmas celebration within the unit, within the the military. And it was set up by I, the general. I didn't even recognize this guy. And uh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, this we we should say this is written by the same author of the Cult of the Grinning Man, which is another Lethbridge Stewart short story that we will be reviewing uh, later on. So we can we can take pen name out of that and say this is <laughs> this is apparently written by somebody who has written something else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Would at you least, like to start over? At least one other thing. Uh, anyway, back to this situation. We have this one higher up in the military that has one of Lethbridge Stewart's uh, <laughs> superiors has decided that it would be fun. General Trubshaw. Trubshaw has decided that it would be fun if the <laughs> – <laughs> the brass <laughs> we all dress up with Santa for a <laughs> special Christmas party. And so Lethbridge Stewart be the you know the good consummate soldier, soldier that he is decides following the orders he's supposed to follow orders. He goes and gets his costume fitted, only to get thrown into some chaos of an orb that <laughs> Is attacking people and is headed towards Buckingham Palace as we speak. <laughs> I, I really liked how the orb was figuring things out. It yeah. wasn't just randomly attacking. It was it more was of a scout at... or exploratory. Uh, yeah, it makes me want to know device. what that thing was. We, you wonder, we don't really get an answer. You, we wonder what possible invasion force might have been behind that. Yeah. So I wonder if that's a setup for future stories. Could be because a lot of these do tie in to stories yeah. within the universe. In fact, yeah, we've had that yeah you know, several times before where they they tie very directly and very close. So it's quite possible, or it could have just been a fun one off. Oh, yeah, and we'll never Either get way. an answer to <laughs> who was coming behind that orb. Um, I, but, I, and I like also how then this orb is attacking, so the brass have to get together. And so they all decide to just stay in their Santa outfits. <laughs> well, they don't have time. There's no time to change. you got to get on horseback well, and run in your Santa suit <laughs> and in your big tanks and the big uh, troop transports. And they just <laughs> and everybody starts piling out dressed as Santa. <laughs> <laughs> 
a brilliant bit of comedy in that. <laughs> it is. It was fun. I also like that the orb is each reported incident or incident that we see happen is different. So the the death of the first yeah, couple yeah. is different than the death of the next person, and everything is done in a different way. The attack on the uh, Santa that's uh, taking the charity Santa in the alley that. Uh, <laughs> The orb <coughs> goes into the burning barrel where the chestnuts were roasted. That's what he was. He was selling yeah, chestnuts, yeah. wasn't he? And uh, goes into the barrel and just plunges into there, and you know, uh, embers fly out. And and, and uh, so every, everything that it was doing, exploring, was was different. And 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 that leads Lethbridge Stewart to sort of figure out that because everything is different, it's testing the different uh, capabilities of humanity or the different responses of humanity and which I think is a very clever way to something different. It's like an experiment on each, each attack. And so I kind of like that that's how it's divulging its information by, well, is it impermeable to heat? Is it impermeable to cold? Is it impermeable yeah. to blood loss? Is it impermeable? And so I thought it's that a, was It's a clever. similar uh, tactic as, like with, uh, with flatline. Yes. With, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Things. And, and a right. uh, uh, far sight more subtle than uh, the Santaran experiment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about more subtle, but... Uh, just, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess it's true. The only difference with the Santaran experiment is we're privy to the reports that are being filed. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's yeah. just put it... It wasn't <coughs> so blatantly in your face. Obvious. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was what, yeah. This, this... It's only 22 pages, this short story. This... Feels and reads like a new Who Christmas special. It is, is everything that you would expect in a new Who Christmas special. It's fast paced. It's fun. It's it's big and epic. And there's something bad happening at Christmas time. And it's just kind of a darn shame that uh, that Saint Nicholas Courtney wasn't around in order to be able to pull this off as a bit of filmmaking <laughs> for one of the holiday specials. Oh, that would have been It would have really just nailed it. I um, think the one thing that I can, being fast-paced, one of the things I can pull out of this, and it works so much in this format because we're doing a short story, because it, it almost makes it feel grander. And had this been done in something longer in length, it would have felt weird. But a lot of the action that happens happens between takes, so we, we between scenes. So we have a scene here, and then something has happened when we've come cut to the next scene. Yeah. And so, like Lethbridge Stewart getting arrested. Yeah, it was almost because it, it, it happens at the end, but then where the, the 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 general's upset, you didn't recognize this guy, you, you didn't take his authority on, on face value, and so. It almost at first seemed like, oh, I would have liked to have seen that. But then in the scope of everything, I kind of thought, no, it's good that we're just kind of alluding to it because it continues to further advance the story and everything through Lethbridge Stewart's eyes. It almost takes out all that filler that sometimes you feel like you get in a longer story that you're trying to flesh everything out. It actually works for this format because we we got to get from point A to point B in 22 pages. We'll just pull that out. We'll just allude to it, and yeah. I think it works in this in this situation. It's definitely one that there was a part of me that wished it had been not like novel length, but right, a little right. bit longer, just to kind of maybe novella, maybe novella, just to give us a little bit more. But as you said, everything that could have been elaborated on, I didn't necessarily need it to be yeah. elaborated on because it, of the way it was constructed, and the writer did a fantastic job with that. I also really like, uh, as opposed to some of the previous. Uh, short stories we've gotten, the formatting they did on the story. I like that we got kind of many chapters. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like that in this uh, in this story. I've always found the, the the pacing of a book seems to help when you have smaller chunks that you can digest. Yeah. Now, I've also read some mammoth novels that each chapter was like a page and a half, right. and there were 97 of them. <laughs> In book one, and then they went to the, and it's like that's 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 a little too much. But it, it just makes it, especially if you're reading on a lunch break or and something like that, it gonna, gives you a place to stop if you need to. And having those breaks between the action, having the actual chapters in there instead of just a page break, really helps too. And then once you once you've established that, once you find that this is the rhythm of the book, then you kind of push it a little bit because it's like, well, I need to stop and get back to work, but I could <laughs> I could read another one of these real quick and right, get to the, right. you know, the next bit. And before you know it, you've blown through it, and it was just it was just amazing. And I was a little late back to work, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading this at work, so <laughs> in between, but 
things that I was supposed to be doing, although we had a slow week last week. Yeah. So. Um, I think yeah. this is my favorite of the short stories I, that we've I, you reviewed know, so far. Yeah, I'm on that. I'm on that cusp of there are there have been some really great ones that we've reviewed so far, and I was on that cusp of as I was reading this, I kept saying, "No, this is the best one." And then I'd slide back and go, well, no, I really liked elements of that one. And then I'd, I'd read something in this one and go, no, 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 this was still the best one. And then I'd slide <laughs> back and go, well, was this really as good as – no, this was as good as that. Yes, yeah, so I kind of did the same thing. I thought, oh, this was fun. This was just – it was enjoyable. This this is the definition of a fun romp. Yeah, it really <laughs> it's is. This, it's this one encapsulates it. Encapsulates well, especially it. when you <laughs> come to the fires in the Buckingham Palace. It's just <laughs> – when you can take a character like Lethbridge Stewart who – is so straight laced and serious. Who, and who's always the straight man to the doctor, or is you know, in 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 this series of books and shorts, he's kind of the you know he's he's our main character. He's the thrust of this, and they're they're playing him very close to the vest in the sense that this is how Lethbridge Stewart is, which is great because that's what we want. We want our Lethbridge Stewart. But then when you turn around and you bend the rules a little bit to force him into a situation, we've got Lethbridge Stewart dressed as Santa. Running on horseback, diving through a Shooting window a in gun. Buckingham Palace, <laughs> getting arrested. All of these things that are just so out of character for Lethbridge Stewart. But he's, he's still in arrested character. Arrested once and nearly arrested again yeah. once yeah. he enters Buckingham <laughs> Palace without authorization. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it, those are the things that just, you know, how far outside of the, the, the norm can you get? Thwarting, this is giving thwarting the queen's guard. <laughs> this, this, this is giving the doctor a bigger on the inside moment. Yes. Is, is, yeah, is yeah. what this is. So, and and it wraps up in a nice little bow because actually, uh, what's the the girlfriend's name? Uh, Sally. 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 So, <clears throat> Sally is just on the edge of intercepting <laughs> this thing each time through her progression in the story, which I thought was neat because I kept expecting her to get involved. Or yeah. be at the at the site where something's happening, and she almost seems to be diverted each time that she's there, and then to, to have her home safe and preparing the meal, and at the end the nice bow of Lethbridge Stewart getting to the store, getting the object that he was going to give her for Christmas in time, showing up on the door, and then that little bit of an element of oh, and he didn't he didn't even bother to change the suit, so he shows up as on <laughs> as the door Santa. as in a, Santa. in a moment that yeah. surprised even himself. It yeah. was yeah. neat. It was so cool. And that's one of those things that had they had a, a, a longer format and a little more time to play with, I'm sure the author would have been very tempted to, well, let's put Sally in a little bit of trouble and, make, and give Lethbridge Stewart that added bit I think of, they would have been yeah. a lot more tempted to do and, that. And I think that would drag down yeah. almost the, the, the fun na- yeah, na- nature of it. It was refreshing that we didn't have anybody in true per- at least anyone close to us in true peril. Lethbridge yeah, you can Stewart. kill all the random people in London you want. Well, we that's, yeah. that, 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 that's, that's true, but that's very true of, 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 of Doctor anything. Who and Lethbridge yeah. Stewart anyway. But oh, there's a the poacher people, in this episode. To have the people closest oh, to I mean, really the only one that was any any sort of dire straits the whole time of the people that were closest to was Lethbridge Stewart. Yeah. But he's the, he's the crux of the story. He's who we're following along. So you expect that from our hero. And so – that was great just to have all of that tension focused on him, but just hint to the fact that, well, Sally might be in danger. No, Sally she, might be she in could danger. Be. No, no, she's no. not. <laughs> Sally might be in danger. No, she's not. <laughs> Sally's at home. <laughs> well, the other thing that was nice, it was really refreshing to kind of get the, the Lethbridge Stewart back to the man of action that, yeah. uh, you know, I felt like I was promised that we sort of won. When, yeah. that we, yeah. the, when they announced these. And, I mean, he leaps off of the horseback on the, onto the bobble. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and carries it over the, the gate. <laughs> or it carries him over the gate, yeah. I should say. Think things that we would not have gotten back in the day. He just simply couldn't do that. So. The, the way the author described all the action events, I could picture it perfectly. I could too. He such a good I job could too. It, it, it re- he really paints a picture in your head of what's happening and what 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 what's happening to Lethbridge Stewart as this, as this is going on. All the way down to riding on the horses and, and calling back the the plan with the other the I can't remember the other guy's yeah. name, but calling back that oh can you can you fire can you <laughs> how's your how's your shot you know you know I, I raided so and so on the range okay good enough and so they get on the horses and as they're going, going? do you think you can hit it off <laughs> on on horseback <laughs> I think so you know just that whole yeah that whole uh, conversation there you just you really picture them. Riding full tilt on a horse down <laughs> down the street towards Buckingham Palace. 
It's nice too. To and a horse that commandeered. Yeah, yeah <laughs> commandeered from, from from officers. It's nice too that we get uh, you know early on in his career when you know he doesn't have a unit to back him up. We do get a, an object that's kind of <laughs> affected by bullets. Yeah, you know he shoots at the thing and it, it it reacts to it. It's not just a ping and it bounces off and it's you know there. And and I, I love the fact that for for all of the high tech wizardry that went into this probe that it was still stumped by something as simple as a mirror. Yeah. That it yeah. didn't know yeah. quite how to react to that, and that's what gave Lethbridge Stewart the opening to, you know, again, distract it and cause it to come forward and yep. and then nab it. So. Well, just the, 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 the reaction it has to its reflection and is trying to test it or be aggressive with what it yeah. sees in the mirror. I thought that was kind of a neat, neat uh, piece as well, yeah. Have you any idea how much that carpet's worth? <laughs> <laughs> it crashed the chandelier down on it, too. That was great. Uh, anything else? Just just an enjoyable yeah, a lot just of fun. an enjoyable story. And a, a, a great piece at Christmas time, I think. It's a, it really, as Sean alluded to, it, this this could easily have been an episode with Lethbridge Stewart at Christmas. It just it's it's so good. Or if there was a Christmas time Red Nose Day or something, it yeah, would have been great yeah, exactly. in that format, too. Precisely. I, I actually see this as about a 15, 20 minute yeah, you yeah. Know, short episode of, of yeah. some sort, an insert for something. Even like a, an extra on a DVD. Or oh, yeah. Blu-ray yeah. Or something, so. Anything else? Well uh, done, Candy Jar. Well done, Tom Dexter. Yes. Well, John, well done. All right. Well, if that's going to do it for this side trip, until next time, I'm Glenn. I'm Sean. I'm Keith. Cheers. Good night, everybody. Be seeing you. You have been listening to Traveling the Vortex. Doctor Who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the BBC. No infringement is intended or implied.